Hello and welcome back to the Linux Tube. I am really excited about today's video. I know our, my last one had a couple of issues, but I we've talked about it and I think we've figured out a way to make that not happen again. Anyways, going along with today's video, it's going to be a fun one. I have been playing with a project that I haven't ever, I mean, I've used the project before, but let's just say I haven't tried to daily drive it really. I've just tinkered with it a little bit. So as you can see by the thumbnail, I'm daily driving Gen 2. This has been a wonderful experience. I want to take you through uh, maybe a little bit just of what you might want to know when you're starting out and then more of how much easier it gets once you get the basic foundational knowledge under your belt. Because I've only been on it for two days so far. It's been really fun, really enjoyable, and it sparked a hope and really a passion back in me for Linux that I haven't had in many years. So I really look forward to that. And, and please, before we get on into the intro, if you wouldn't mind, if you'll go ahead and do the normal, you know, comment, like, and subscribe and share, it makes it where people can see our content. It also makes it where you guys can help us grow our community, bring more people into the Linux space. It's really helpful for them. So all right, we're going to go and get on into the intro, and I'll see you back after that. Now that we are back from the introduction, I want to show you my experience in Gen 2 and how much fun this has been. And I'll explain why it's as much fun as it is throughout. So... If you're somebody that has been in the Linux ecosystem for a while, you will generally probably understand the foundational structure of how it works for the most part, excluding NixOS because it does function a little bit different as well as Geeks. But there's a big but here that it's not that different than what you're used to. Let me go ahead and get a window popped up here in OBS and I'll go ahead and, go ahead and let you see it. Give me just a sec. I'll be right back. Now that we are back here, and you guys can see my desktop, something really nice about Gen 2 that I want to start out with, you actually cannot see right now. I don't know why it's not showing up. It's not a big deal. Let's see if I can show you. This is what I generally write the most of my system to look like. It's very simple, very easy to use, and it's not very, let's just say, overwhelming for my brain. I'm a simplistic, very minimalistic type of person when it comes to these type of things. But I'm going to show you something. So I have here, I just have the normal little KDE panel. Then I have the standard different icons. Something I'm going to mention is this is very, very, very fast. I do not have an open session of system settings. Watch this. It took a second there. I'm not sure why. Let's go and close it. See if it'll reopen in the same speed. So we'll go there. Yep, there we go. It just had to get it back into memory. But once it's in memory, it's very quick, extremely quick. And it'll jump between, you know, different areas just like you normally would. But my big thing that I really enjoy, and since my daily usage typically involves OBS, a couple of different applications such as Caden Live or GIMP, I can show you how those launch. The last few times I've done Caden Live, I'm using a flat pack for just simplicity. You'll understand here in a minute why. Because I have two in, uh, GPUs in the system right now. It's just so I can detect both. Yep, see, that didn't take long at all. They've also updated Caden Live, which is kind of nice here. But that's a whole other video maybe I'll make next time. But there's that. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up GIMP. So with GIMP, we're going to go ahead and hit enter. Watch how fast this is loading. I have never had GIMP load that fast on any other system. And I'm going to show you why it's running this fast and running this well here in just a minute. So let me go ahead and those are my typical applications. But I'm also going to open up Firefox. I was having some audio issues, but I figured out what it was. You know, audios next to a speaker is not a great idea for those of you out there who don't know that. So what you need, what I need to do, I'm going to open up my terminal, which I have just using console. 
I know I should be using electricity or something that's, you know, I don't know. What's the term they use? Hardware accelerated. I'm going to go ahead and move myself to the right side so you guys can see what's going on in this terminal. You will understand here in just a minute why. So we're going to go ahead and plus this up. And then we're going to go ahead and go to where the package file is that I want to show you. So sudo nano. I'm just going to use nano today. I'm going to do package. Oh, no, no, not package. It's portage. I don't know why I was thinking package. Then we'll go to make.comp. So if you don't know anything about Gen 2, this file here is basically what sets your variant, like how you're going to compile things essentially. So like up here, this is my architecture that I'm compiling against, right? So on my CPU is a Broadwell CPU. That's the Intel, Intel architecture. Yours may be Skylake and whatever, or it may be Ryzen. They have different variants like Zen 3, Zen 4, so on and so forth. But, but something else that's cool is down here, they are just the, by default, if you can't see it well, I'll just tell you, this is GCC, right? That's what you typically compile things with. But you can actually replace this with Clang. Just be very careful. You can break things very easily. I've already managed to do that once, but I have managed to fix it as well. Just make sure if what you might want to consider doing if you're going to do this or install Clang is try setting it from on a... Instead of doing a global var variable, do a local one, basically per, per package. It's a little bit easier and a little bit better to do. And then there's down here something that I could not live without, and that's the make option. So this is actually choosing or letting me choose how many cores I want to use, right? My Or how many threads, not cores. Let me see. So like here I have J44. That means I'm using all 44 threads of mine. This is the minimum we can never use. I put it down a little bit because thermally the system's all right, but I also don't think I want to be maxing it every single time it's compiling something. And then for my NVIDIA, for my video cards, I have my Vid NVIDIA driver and then my Intel. I'm just telling it what each thing is. Something else I have found that I absolutely love about Gen 2 is it works with ARC. It's been working absolutely great, but I also have the NVIDIA card, which it also works very well with. So there is that. Here's a little hack if you don't know and you're new to Gen 2 because it doesn't necessarily say in the handbook from what I was reading. You can just put star and it'll accept the licenses for you. Just be aware you are accepting a bunch of licenses. So keep that in mind. And then whenever you do pipe wire, make sure you come in here and set up Pulse Audio because it does use the Pulse Audio interface to make it where you can listen to audio. I hope they one day replace that entirely. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and go out of that file and I'm going to go show you a couple more that I'm, I really like and it gets my juices going, I guess, for lack of better words. So we're going to go change our directory into Portage. And then we're going to go to, what was it, package. So there's a few different ones. So we have package.accept keywords. So we're going to go there. I'm going to show you that here I've been building the Flatpak builder because I'm building DaVinci Resolve as a Flatpak so that I can install it on this system and make it very easy to use instead of having to set up everything locally. Kind of a cheating a little bit. But then I have OBS Studio, which is from whenever I was setting up OBS before locally, but Alex and I talked and he was like, you should be using the flat pack. And I ag eventually agreed with them. And well, it's magically working, as you can tell. Then we have V4L2 loopback, which allows for you to see me with my camera. Then we have the vanilla sources, which is for another, for another kernel. So we're going to go back a directory. We're going to go into package.use so there's quite a few different things here so there's clang let's see if i can make this a little bit bigger as well real quick uh plus plus there we go so we have clang down here on the left that's for when i'm setting up clang and playing with things droid cam is for some phone stuff i was modifying ffmpeg to for some variation stuff 
I was going to test something in a virtual machine. But the reason why this matters is because this section right here is to tell your system whenever it's compiling something what that like specific dependency versions are going to use for a package. Because you right, every single package has different versions. And by going in here and doing that, it makes it where it knows what to use. So it's very easy. I end up not using the local version of Handbrake. Again, a flat pack is what I'm using there. For for whatever reason, I'm since I'm new to this, I'm new to this Gen 2 thing for the most part. I'm gonna use what it works for now, but I'm gonna continue to learn by going step by step and learning through the individual packages and eventually getting full functionality. Just take some time and just take some definite patience for sure. I will say that much. So we will go something that GNOME in our Discord server mentioned is that to have a distribution kernel available. The reason why is because those boot on almost everything. So if you modify your kernel, right, your custom version of the kernel, and it breaks, you at least have something to boot into so you can fix it, which that's absolutely amazing. I think that was probably the best advice I've got in a very, very long time. Thank you so much. I just want to say that real quick and give you some kudos for that. Then let's see here. So there's something kind of interesting. So I'm going to go into my package.mask with my specific GPU, it's a little bit older for my NVIDIA card. He helped me set up a file called NVIDIA here. And what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna open it without root because I don't really need it. because I'm not modifying anything. You're gonna see here, we have the X11 drivers of the 40, 470 NVIDIA drivers. So my, my long-term goal, because of how much they have actually been doing a lot of work on the open source drivers is to eventually completely use those. I think there will be solid enough support for this card that's going to work well. So I'm really excited about that and I'm just waiting and it's getting closer and closer every day and I could see it happening rather sooner rather than later. So there is that. But for now, what that file does is it makes it where it will not update past the 470 driver because if we tried it and we tried to build the 515 driver and it would not build because it just doesn't it's not supported on my hardware so by being able to limit it back and use this specific one and then never change make to where i have a very stable system and that's why i heard of why i'm really liking gen 2 it's just this is crazy stable it's been ridiculously stable whenever i compile something it'll tell me whether it completes properly or not it'll say failed if it didn't tell me why it failed and then i can go fix it i don't know of very many other distributions that truly tell you exactly what happened it's more of you have to go debugging and figuring things out more for yourself but i have been loving gen 2 it's 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 amazing and it's really really nice and it's very familiar but it's also something that's where i'm learning something new and i, I really appreciate it so much so we're gonna go ahead and next show you a little bit about about my experience so far with kaden live and my gpu support so i have found something really cool and i've not been able to get my other cards to work well on other os's but it's working well in, GP, in Gen 2. So what we're gonna do is for now, I'm gonna open up Caden Live, the flat pack. You'll give it a second to load. And then I'll drag it over. Okay, it's already here. Then what we will do is make sure there's not two instances. Okay, we will go ahead and grab in a clip here, right? I'll grab my old video, throw it in here. Unfortunately, I cannot salvage this audio. Unfortunately, it is, it is what it is. But anyways, we're going to throw my old video in here. And then I'm going to go render a project. Normally, these would fail. But what I'm doing here is a little bit different. And I want to point out for people buying GPUs. In a second, once I resize this. And when you go to Hardware Accelerated, the Experimental tab, they're all here and available. But I'm going to show you an error that I have. And that is, let's see, render to file. 
Yes, we'll just override it. That's fine. I'm not going to give it a name. We're waiting. Giving it a second. Two hours later. Okay. This is taking a solid minute. But at least it isn't crashing. It was crashing before and giving me an error of having too old of an NVIDIA driver, basically, is what it was. But it's not crashing. Okay. But at least it doesn't seem to be doing anything. So, but, but there's that, right? But whenever I fire it up in Handbrake, it lets me use the NVIDIA card and encode the entire thing. That's how that file was in 4K at 24 FPS. Because I actually encoded it, trying to fix it. But... From now on, I'm, my goal is to try to release my videos with Elite with 4K, upload them that way, and we'll see if if YouTube will let us have 4K video, because my system can can now handle it, and I'm really wanting to see the quality on it. And this camera is a lot better than my old one. It does a lot better job generally with the lighting and whatnot. It also does a better job with typical quality. So you'll laugh. If, if, you, if you know what the camera is, you know, we can talk in the Discord. I haven't plugged it yet. If you don't know already, we do have a Discord. Go ahead and join us over there. It's down in the description. And it, as always, if you need anything, just hit us up. We're more than happy to help you. You're more than welcome to tag at Sprungles anytime. I mean, if I'm asleep, I won't be, obviously won't be able to respond, but I will respond as soon as I get up or whenever I'm able to. You're also welcome to DM me if you need something. Um, but note, I do have it where I have to accept your DMs and for obvious reasons, keep me on spam and whatnot. So there is that. Oh, and then don't forget, if you want to support us, go ahead and go down to this little area below the video. There's something that says join. We do have three different tiers. Uh, one of them is just a basic tier. Another is where you can call into the shows on Sundays if you do want to on, and then there's the last tier. We're going to have a monthly stream for, for our supporters. So if you want to join us for that, you can. If you are if you subscribe, it, it'll best definitely make it where you have an impact on the channel. And we'll try to make content and see if uh, we can do something that you guys want. So there is that. But don't forget, we do have a community cast every first, I believe it's every first Friday. And you'll see that as an announcement thing in our Discord. And then... Uh, Go ahead and buy us a coffee if you don't want to be on a subscription model. You can do a one-time thing, and it'll support the channel. Or you can even find us over on Locals, which is another option if you like Rumble. Because we do copy all of our stuff over to Rumble. And we also copy it over to Odyssey if you don't like Rumble or YouTube. So, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video here and just say... Dude, Gen 2 has been absolutely phenomenal. I'm really enjoying this experience. I've not been this involved and this excited about something in a long time and really wanting to learn. So this has been impactful, and I'm really hoping you guys give it a chance. If you're new to Linux, I recommend you might give it some time. Try going through Arch first, learn how Arch works, and then if you're just itching to want to scratch that itch, go ahead and give it a go. Just make sure you have somebody there to support you and help you through the process, because I'm telling you, it took us about eight hours to get everything to work. So, all right, guys, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Bye, guys. Bye. The sun.